Father who art in heaven, we pray and thank you for this gathering of your saints, not only in this auditorium, but in all over the world, as many as are with us right now. And everyone that will follow us later, Lord, we thank you for every one of these lives. For Lord, this by your power and for your purpose that we gather here, that you might teach us your word, and might give us humble and teachable spirits to understand, to receive, and to put it into practice. The Lord, our prayers might always be heard on high. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all be seated. This evening we want to look at one type of prayer. There are different types of prayer. There are different types of prayer. We know Thanksgiving prayer. Um, we know supplication. We know about petitioning. We know about intercession. But there's one type of prayer that is very, very powerful and effective that it appears most Christians are not conversant with. And that is entreating the Lord, entreating the Lord. Therefore, this evening in this service, we're going to look at something I've entitled Entreating the Lord. Entreating. E N T R. E A T I N G, entreating the Lord. And for our scripture, I would like us all to go to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 8, verses 8 to 14. Exodus 8, 8 to 14. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version of the Holy Bible. Exodus 8, reading from verse 8 and ending at verse 14. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people. And I will let the people go, that they may sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, Accept the honor of saying when I shall intercede for you, for your servants, and for your people, to destroy the frogs from you and your houses, that they may remain in the river only. So he said, tomorrow. And he said, let it be according to your word, that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from you, from your houses, from your servants, and from your people. They shall remain in the river only. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out, to the Lord concerning the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. So the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And the frogs died out of the houses, out of the courtyards, and out of the fields. They gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. The land stank. Amen. The background to this story is that Israel had been in Egypt for over 400 years. And the latter part of their sojourn there, the Egyptians had enslaved them, made their lives miserable. So the Israelites cried out to the Lord their God for deliverance. And God called Moses and sent him to Egypt to bring out his people, Israel, into the land of Canaan, which the Lord had 
promised and prepared for them. But when Moses went to Pharaoh, he faced opposition from Pharaoh and from the Egyptians. They did not want the Israelites to leave. And he said, no way, never would they allow Israel to leave the land of Egypt. So God had to bring as a means of forcing them to agree to let Israel go as many as ten plagues, ten afflictions, one after the other. And this one, very early in the, in the plagues, what God did, God brought about frogs, frogs that sort of covered the whole land, all the land of Egypt. Frogs everywhere, in their houses, in their, in their homes, in their rooms, bedrooms, uh, in their courtyards, in the river Nile where they fetch water to drink. There were frogs everywhere. Frogs everywhere. And um, I remember when I was in primary school, uh, there was a, a book, primary school book in pictures. And the, these pictures show the templates that God brought upon Egypt. And in one of the pictures was Pharaoh who had lifted, he had got some water or wine to drink. And as he lifted the cup to his mouth, a frog from nowhere jumped into the cup. And he couldn't drink. <laughs> so you can imagine if a frog would jump into the cup or wine or Pharaoh, and what about the rest of the people? So Pharaoh uh, seemed to have considered defeat. He seemed to concede defeat. The Bible said, therefore he called for Moses and Aaron. And when Moses and Aaron appear before him, Pharaoh, he asked Moses to entreat. He said, entreat the Lord your God. Let's go back there again. Chapter 8, verse 8. Let's see the exact word that Pharaoh used. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, entreat the Lord and treat the Lord that he may take away the fraud from me and from my people. And I will let the people go that they may sacrifice to the Lord. Now, entreating or to entreat the Lord is a form of prayer. Like I said before, there are different kinds of prayer. And before you begin to pray, before you as a believer begin to pray, you must decide what kind of prayer or what kinds of prayer you are going to pray. Depending on the circumstance, depending on the situation, if you're going to make your own request known to God, we say you're going to make a supplication. Supplication. You're going to ask God to do something for you that is personal prayer for yourself is supplication. Now, to pray for somebody else, you're going before God to pray, but you're going to pray for somebody else, not yourself, or primarily not yourself, but mainly for somebody else, that is intercession. You are going to intercede for that person. It can be warfare prayer. It can be thanksgiving prayer. If the Lord has done something for you, you want to go and thank him. So you decide that, as I go before the Lord now, I'm going to offer him thanksgiving. My prayer is going to be a prayer of thanksgiving. And God knows, before you even come before him, he knows what you are there for. Therefore, Pharaoh... Being aware of this, ask Moses, entreat the Lord your God, or entreat the Lord, entreat the Lord, that the Lord will take away from us the frogs. 
so that God will take away the frogs. Because he, to entreat is to plead mm. or ask urgently. To plead is not just a casual prayer. It is not a simple prayer, but it is a prayer that is deep. And there's urgency attached to it. In other words, the answer must happen. God must answer. Otherwise, some evil will befall you. Some bad thing will happen. So God must answer. So we said that to entreat is to plead. You are pleading. You are not demanding. You are pleading. You are asking. But the urgency with which you ask is such that uh, it is able to persuade God. This is the thing about entreating. It is still prayer. But in this prayer, you are pleading. You are asking with such urgency as to persuade God. In other words, God, you want God to, by all means, look upon your situation and therefore answer you. And sometimes you don't leave. You don't stop until you have received the answer. Now, Pharaoh, there's something about this story, that Pharaoh was sure. Pharaoh knew. Pharaoh knew that he could not ask God to take away the frogs. He was not in a position to ask God to take away the frogs. He said, know that. But he knew that there was somebody whose prayer, especially if it's an entreating that God will listen to. And that person was Pharaoh, sorry, was Moses and Aaron. So he called for Moses and Aaron and said, Moses, entreat your Lord. Take away the frogs and I will in, in, turn, in return let the people go that they may sacrifice the Lord your God. In other words, Moses, go and plead with the Lord. Ask the Lord urgently and expect results. Don't just go and say, oh, I've, I've prayed. And that is all. Because a lot of times when many of us pray as believers, we pray for prayer's sake. We are prayed. That is all. It doesn't matter how serious the situation that we are in is but we pray and prayer has become routine therefore we pray and a lot of times we don't get answers because God seeing your heart knowing your heart know that yes you are praying but you are not putting into that prayer the attitude the heart, the spirit, the energy, the desperation that God requires to see in you before he answers or answers that prayer by looking at your posture. We've seen a case with, um, we know many cases like Hannah, Hannah who was barren, uh, went to entreat the Lord. He went, she went to entreat the Lord. And um, the Lord saw her heart and God answered her prayer and she conceived and gave birth to Samuel. So Pharaoh knew that he was not qualified. God did not hear him. But there's somebody that God always hears. And that somebody or those people were Moses and Aaron. So he called for them and asked them to entreat the Lord. The Lord will take away the frogs. Now, having made the request to Moses, Moses had to reply. 
if somebody calls you as a believer, somebody is in trouble, the person may be an unbeliever, or the person's faith or relationship with God may not be sad that he or she can be assured that when he or she entreats the Lord, God will hear and then calls you, calls you, my brother, my sister, please entreat the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Lord will do this for me. Otherwise, I perish. Otherwise, I die. Otherwise, bad news. What kind of confidence would you have? Would you say, oh, sorry, <laughs> but uh, let me go and call my pastor. Oh, sorry, let me go and call elder. I mean, I'm not an elder. I'm just an ordinary church member. But look at Moses' confidence. He said, and Moses said to Pharaoh, verse 9, accept the honor of saying when I shall intercede for you, for your servants, and for your people to destroy the fraud from you and your houses, that they may remain in the river only. So he said, tomorrow. And he said, let it be according to your word, that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. What does it mean? What was Moses saying? Moses was being very careful here. We have to be very careful. Moses, okay, I know that when I pray, the Lord will hear and the Lord will take the frogs away. But in order that you doubt, you doubt, in order that you don't, so in order that you don't doubt, in order that you don't come and say, oh, the frogs just went away by themselves. Or the frog just swam away or jumped away. It wasn't your God who did it. You didn't do it. The frog just died out of hunger. You know, I know you, Pharaoh. After, after the Lord had taken away the frogs, you will come back with an excuse to discredit the Lord and deny that God had done this thing. So, Pharaoh, tell me when you want me to pray this entreating prayer. So when the frogs have been taken away, you will know, you will know that there's no one else than the Lord our God. And Pharaoh said, tomorrow. And Moses said, okay, exactly as you have said, so between now and tomorrow, not one frog will die. Not one frog will die. But as soon as I pray, all the frogs will begin to die except the frogs in the river. So Moses, being very wise, said, okay, the frogs will die. Only the frogs in the river Nile will not die. So you know that it wasn't by accident. It was not by your God. It wasn't by anybody that the frogs have gone back. Exactly as I said, the frogs will die after I prayed. Only the frogs in the river shall not die. Pharaoh said, okay, now, what will make Moses so confident? <laughs> Moses appeared to have some confidence that um, uh, most people don't have in relation to the Lord, in relation to prayer. Because he, I believe that if you're going to pray and you are not certain that God will hear your prayer, my daughter, <laughs> Oh, you are not saying that God will even answer your prayer. Then what, 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 then what are you going to pray? Then what is the purpose of that prayer? I mean, if I need money, I need money or something, and I know that the uh, elder has what I need, but I know that if I go to elder, she will not give me. No matter how, I, how much I entreat her, she will not give me. Do you think I will go? To, I will go? No. So, the approach to prayer is a very delicate thing. And that's why many of us, our prayers don't get answered. The Bible said that whoever counts the Lord must believe that he is. He is. And that he's a, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, Moses, knowing that God will answer him, that God will honor his prayer, was able to challenge through this open challenge to Pharaoh. 
name the time, yeah, the frogs will die, but the frogs in the river will not die. So that everyone will know that it's our God who has done it. It is my God who has done it. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. So that everyone will know that there's no one like the Lord our God. So in doing that, Moses was trying, making sure that when the miracle occurred, everyone in Egypt would know that it was his God who had brought the frogs and had also taken away the frogs. Not only that, they also hold the Lord in awe, that they will know that there's no one like the Lord our God. So they will honor God. They will honor God. Beloved, everything that I want God to do for us or for our loved ones, remember, there must be an element of honor for God in it. Especially in the church. Because God has no honor, God has no glory in the world except in the church. The only place that God has glory in this world is in the church. Therefore, God always wants to show forth his glory. And therefore, in praying urgently or in treating the Lord, uh, don't just take the answer, the miracle, and walk away with it, but give God the glory. Give God at least some of the glory. So Moses confidently said, verse 11, And the frost shall depart from you, from your houses, from your servants, and from your people. They shall remain in the river only. They shall remain in the river only. Praise the Lord. Here, we see a very vivid description of the relationship between Moses and God. Especially, when they went away, it was Moses who cried out to God. The Bible didn't say that Moses and Aaron cried out. Kind of mean they prayed. They prayed with urgency. The Bible does not mention Aaron. The Bible mentions Moses. Why? Because in those days, there was a very clear-cut relationship between everybody and God. Uh, even the king, the king hardly apart from me, Solomon, the king ever hardly prayed and God answered. The king will always call for the prophet and not the prophet to inquire of the Lord. The Israelites didn't have that personal relationship with God that we have today. Aaron, even though he was a high priest, Moses was the leader. Moses was the one who was called and Aaron was his assistant. Moses was the one who spent 40 days and 40 nights on Mount Sinai. He brought the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Moses had that personal, special relationship with God. And Moses was aware of this. Pharaoh knew it. Beloved, as Christians, are you aware of any personal relationship with God? And if so, how close is that relationship? Are you able to entreat the Lord, your God, who loves you so much that he gave you his only begotten son so you will not perish? Are you confident to entreat him concerning certain things and expect that he will hear you and answer you Moses had that relationship. Aaron had an office. The king had an office. But Moses' office was that of mediating between God and the people. Standing before God, praying, and God hearing, and God answering. And this describes that kind of relationship that we now, because of what Christ has done for us, it describes the kind of relationship that we must have with God as believers, as Christians. 
For example, that when we pray, when we cry out, when we entreat the Lord, the Lord hears you. He will hear you. And if he hears you, he will answer you. Let's go to the book of 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. First John 5, 14 and 15. First John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. The Bible says here now that now this is the confidence that we have in him. We have in Christ Jesus. We have in God. Now this is the confidence. Just say confidence. That we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know, we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. It is a matter of assurance, confidence, based on your personal relationship with God. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, you must have that personal relationship. You must have that assurance, that confidence, that when you pray, God hears you. If you know God will not hear you, then what, 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 what are you praying for? You are wasting your time. You are just talking to the air. And if God will hear you, then have the faith, have the confidence, the assurance that the thing that you are entreating him for, you shall have it. You shall have it. Therefore, it was Moses who cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs. The Bible said, the Lord heard Moses. May God hear your every prayer, church. When you pray, may God hear you. In the name of Jesus. And that's why I mean, God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us. Because it's a weakness that we have. It's a weakness that we have. The Holy Ghost has been given to help our weakness. Because we, if we don't even know the things that we should pray for. As we what? There are some things that we should pray for. God seeing you know that you should pray for healing. And yet, when, when you come before him, you open your mouth, you are asking for money. It's not money that you, God knows it's not money that you, you need healing. And you are asking for money. Some of you need spiritual gifts. God wants to give us spiritual gifts. Or trans gifts, revelational gifts, power gifts. But every time we go before the Lord, we are praying for prosperity. Prosperity. You know. And the Bible said the Holy Spirit helps us in this weakness. It's a weakness that we have as human beings. But we don't know what we should pray for, though we should, God expects us to know, but we don't know. So the Holy Ghost helps us in this. So Moses was specific. Cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs. Concerning the frogs. Not for anything about concerning the frogs. The Lord heard him. The Lord took away the frogs. Just say Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Now, today, every true believer, I believe, occupies more or less the same position with God as Moses did. It's a position of grace. It's a position based on grace. Not because of how good you are, not because of anything that is peculiar to you, but it's all by grace. It is something that you, didn't, you don't deserve, but have been given to you, you know, with no strength attached, because of Jesus Christ. And if you have this in mind, if you have this understanding, you have this confidence, you will always cry out to the Lord, and after, after all your needs have been fulfilled, you cry out to the Lord concerning others' needs, and the Lord will hear you. 
the Lord will bless others because of you. May God bless others because of you, church. In the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at what Jesus says in Matthew 21. Matthew chapter 21. Verses 20 to 22. Matthew chapter 21. Verses 20 to 22. Matthew 21, 20, 22. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, If you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. I've said before that um, most of the time, we believers pray because we have to pray. We are asked to pray. But we don't really believe that the thing that we are asking for, God will answer. Because he, we have asked the same things many times. And we keep on asking the same way. Therefore, we, we, therefore we get the same answer, which is no answer at all. And therefore, we have come to the point where now we believe that, okay, we pray, but, well, God, God, doesn't, either God doesn't hear, or even if he hears at all, he doesn't answer. Here Jesus who, who commanded the fig tree to, to, to die. And the next day, the fig tree had, fig tree had completely withered away, become a, a, dead, a dead tree. And the disciples marveled, how can this happen overnight? In the same way as God caused a plant to grow overnight, provide a shade over Noah's head. This tree died overnight. And they couldn't understand. Jesus said, <laughs> if you have faith, little faith, not only can you do what I've done, but you can say to any mountain, move into the sea to obey. A mountain is, is a challenge, it's an obstacle. It's time for problem in your life or in somebody else's life. A mountain is something that is mountainous. So in fact, not only is this stopping you, you can't go forward, you can't, you can't climb it. So it's blocking your way. You can't go forward. With, when there's a mountain before, you can't go forward without it. You can't go beyond it. You are, it. It stops you from progressing. It blocks your view. You can't see ahead. And if you want to go around it, it's such a long distance. So a mountain is a problem. A problem. So, Jesus said that you can pray and command that mountain to move. And to move. And to move. If only you believe. If only you come, you know, and treat him. And treat him. Asking urgently. So as to persuade with humility. Adoration. It can be done. So Jesus said, ask whatever you will believe in. And it will be done. Praying to get answers. That's entreating the Lord. Believing that you get the answer. Believing that you get the answer. That's entreating the Lord. Moses did and got the answer. Then John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Verses 12 to 14. John chapter 14. Verses 12, 13, and 14. Jesus again speaking. John chapter 14, verses 12, 13, and 14. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater work than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, 
that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Before you get to the point of asking anything in his name, Jesus said, the work that he's doing, these also you must do. And in fact, greater works will you do because he's going to the Father. He's, he's no longer here without physically. God, Jesus, is not here without physically. He's going to the Father. So he has left the work that is undone for us. And as the human population grows, as the world develops, as things get more and more complicated, the work that we need to do becomes greater and greater. So he said, greater works will you also do. Now, this greater work doesn't mean that you do greater miracles. Nobody can do greater miracles than Jesus did. Because, simply because we are not Jesus. Are you Jesus? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I know, I know, I told you that this, there was this pastor who who desired to have a very great anointing. This pastor desired to have a very, very great anointing. And why not? Very soon I'm going to teach you something about the anointing. I'll do it on a Sunday so you all understand. So this pastor desired to have the great anointing. He decided to go and fast for 100 days. How many days did he just fast for? 40 days. How many days did Moses fast for? 40. Elijah? 40. But this pastor said that he wanted two and a half times the anointing of Jesus or Elijah. So he's going to do 100 days. I think he, he did well. He went as far as 67 days. So to begin with, he told everyone that he was traveling. That was a lie. He started with a lie. He told everyone he was traveling. So they should not even look for him. That was a lie. One who is going to fast and you begin with a lie. Then he went to a friend's house, asked for a room, and shut himself in. No food, no water. Just praying. I think he tried. He, 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 he reached 67 days. 67 days. And he became unconscious. And uh, when the friend couldn't hear from him, he broke down the door. There he was almost dead. And eventually he died. He died. And before he died, I went to see him. He was admission in the hospital. Um, he was eating and drinking, but he died. And then I had a friend who decided to do, he decided to do, um, what, 14 days non-stop. And uh, he got as far as four days. Only four days. And after four days, he told me, each time he lied down to sleep, uh, demons would come and shake the bed. <laughs> yeah. he, he went into the spirit realm. And because of, because of the fact that what he was doing was wrong, instead of finding himself, finding himself among angels, he landed in the headquarters of demons who welcomed him with shaking the bed. So he had to give up after four days went to look for not that bread and tea, but fufu and whatever, and, and then the, the shaking of the bed stopped. Never tried again. Um, <laughs> so Moses, well, Jesus is not saying that the miracles that he did will do more miracles than, no, that's not what he means here. He said the works, witnessing, preaching, teaching, going from place to place, being kind to people, compassionate, making sure that gospel will reach all those who came near him, and sometimes praying for others, praying for others, because he's God, he prayed that miracles happen, but you pray for others. Uh, make sure that gospel is propagated. Make sure that gospel, the last of the gospel remains kindled. Because he, he's no longer, he's not, God, I got my father. I'm no longer going to, so you must continue that, those works. And you do more, because there will be more work. As time goes on, Jesus, who can see the end from the beginning, he said, there's going to be more work, so you have to do more work. So, beloved, for you to have that personal 
confident relationship with God like Moses did. Moses was a servant of God. He was doing the work that God had commanded him to do. God had commanded him to do a lot of things. How many of us are obeying? How many of us are doing anything at all, you know, to, 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 to move the gospel forward? Not many of us. But when we begin to do the work that Jesus did, then he said, ask whatever you will, and I will do it. And I'll do it. Entreat me, and I'll do it. Just come with your entreating. You are in trouble. You need something urgent. You, I know you need it, but you have to come before me. I will, I will not come to you and say, oh, this is what you need. Take. No, you come and treat, pray. It's a sign of humility. God knows it. But to, to, to show that you are humble, that you are relying on him, that he is your supplier, you go to him, you entreat him, and you do it. Moses prayed to God, cried out to God. God took away the frogs. They all died. And the Bible said they gathered them up in heaps. Only the frogs in the river Nile and the river remained. And the land was filled with stench. Dead frogs. Even live frogs are smelly enough. How much more dead frogs in the whole land and treating the Lord. Beloved, yes, now and then, come before God. Don't be shy. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Come to the throne of grace. It's a throne of grace. There you obtain mercy and you find grace to help you in the time of need and treat the Lord. Treat the Lord. It is not a casual thing. We have to set some time aside. If possible, come to the house of God. Leave your usual environment. Leave your comfort zone. Go to the house of God. Come to the church, you alone. I'm not saying you should pray for hours. It can be just 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, one hour. And you, you, can, you sense yourself that your prayer has gone. And then when you leave here, you don't just forget. Keep it in mind, expecting that the frogs will die from the land. And God, who will watch you as you leave, knowing the heart that you are living here with, he will honor you. He will do it. He will do it. Right now as we talk, as I speak, I have a, a daughter in one of our branches who who lost her first pregnancy. She lost the baby. And the baby was nine months old. The baby was born, still bed. The baby was fully mature. It was time for her to deliver. And when she delivered, the baby was dead. Nothing wrong at all. And after that, a pregnancy wasn't coming again. It wasn't coming. But somewhere along the line, she said to go and entreat the Lord. Meanwhile, she, she lives with her she, the, she and her husband have left Accra. They were living in Tepa, in the, in the Brown of region, Tepa or Bichim, one of those places, far away from us. But when she watched and watched and watched and saw that oh, after two or three years, pregnancy wasn't coming, she came back to Accra, came back to the branch where she is, and began to entreat the Lord. Began to entreat the Lord. And when she has Pray the prayer of entreating for a while. She's sensing herself, like Hannah, that God has heard her. Her husband is in the, in the Brown region, so she went back there because she can't get pregnant here alone. So she went back. And within two months, going back, she took seed, got pregnant. Praise the Lord. She got pregnant. She didn't stop there. She called me very excited. We prayed on the phone. Then, soon after that, then she came. She came back and continued waiting on the Lord. And she delivered, um, she delivered I think, what was, it? was it Sunday or uh, Sunday? Two, four days. Yeah, just, just this week. Delivered. Normal, healthy, bouncing baby. This boy or girl? Is it girl, eh? Girl. Just a few days ago. 
That is her story. Lord, it, it, it can be anything. It can be marriage. Because I tell that as you sit here, as long as you are child of God, there's somebody that God had here for you to marry. You. That person is maybe playing Chaskali in another church or even here. <laughs> that person can be here, but you don't know. It's God who has to hold your two hands and bring you together. Marriage. It can be pregnancy, I've mentioned. It can be a job. It can be healing. It can be anything. With God, nothing shall be impossible. All you have to do is to come to realize, understand some of these things, and to realize, I know I must do just a bit more and see. Just a bit more and see. And God will shock you. God will surprise you. And may God surprise you all. May God indeed shock you all. Need a shock that is a, 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 a present shock in the name of Jesus. Entreating the Lord. Just say, I shall entreat the Lord. Say, in the name of Jesus. Clap your two hands for Jesus.